Oh, yate, medakyapi. Welcome back to the channel, Navajo Man and Lakota Bay. Don't forget to drop a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to keep updated on all vlogs and posts. Uh, also, follow us on our other um, uh, social media, uh, which we utilize Instagram. You can follow Angel Lakota Bay at Angel White Eyes on Instagram. So, yeah, and uh, don't forget to. Uh, check out our merch store as well. We got a merch going. We got our clothes, apparel, logos, and yeah, you guys can go check that out. I'll put that all in the description down below. So don't forget to check it out. Support your favorite Indians. Anyways, you guys see where I'm at? Um, that hill behind me. That's the um, that's the uh, massacre site of Wounded Knee. So those of you that don't know about um, the the Wounded Knee Massacre. I'll give y'all a little brief history. Um, so the Wounded Knee Massacre took place uh, back in 1890 of December 29th. And um, this area here, this little village here. So you guys see that all behind me. So back then, this was a agency, a little camp, more like a prisoner camp right the united states the government they placed them here in wounded knee and you know uh, a long story short after the a little big horn happened and took place um pretty much the calvary was out for blood and they wanted payback and all that so they came here uh they slaughtered and massacred um hundreds of women and children and elderly which pretty much this place was uh, filled with they say it's a battle but it was it was more of a massacre because no one in camp had weapons or they you know they were practicing a uh, ghost dance at the time and uh, the settlers these the soldiers there at the time were afraid that they were having an Indian uprising you know so this uh, uh, this ghost dance that they were doing um, I was told to it, it was believed that it would bring back the buffaloes resurrect their ancestors and um, the white men will will um, leave so um, to the Calvary to the government that was a threat um, you know they were afraid that it was be an Indian uprising so they ended up um, stopping that here so this area here has a history it was it was a massacre site at one point after the massacre all the um, women and children and um, those that were slaughtered the elderlies they were all on the ground they just bunched them up on wagons and threw them in a mass grave up on that hilltop so with that being said um, you guys see us we're all gathered here you guys want to know what's happening what um, we are so we're gathered here um, in remembrance of the wounded knee um, victims uh, there's a lot of uh, um, there's a lot of relatives that have um, connection through their relatives from way back then that are writing for them um, so this is on behalf of them they're gonna remember their ancestors in this way. So, this event is also dedicated to um, Grandpa Roger's uh, mom, uh, Grandma Sissy. So they're gonna dedicate this run for her as well. They're doing a motorcycle run. It's called um, Wounded Knee Memorial Motorcycle Run. So they host this every year, every summer around this time. They start from where Sitting Bull was killed way up north towards uh, Standing Rock, I believe. The chief sitting bulls gravesite and then they start to make their way their journey down and come all the way down to wounded knee so that's why we're going to be gathering here we're waiting now i'll show you guys everybody's going to be coming in up from from that direction yeah so sit back and enjoy and um let's remember the ancestors what are we here for today a bike ride a bike ride mm -hmm. oh What's a bike ride for? I'm um, Grandma Sissy. Oh yeah, Grandma Sissy. All right, well, bike memorial ride for Grandma Sissy.
So they'll be coming in up there. We got the Twindians waiting. See grandma and grandpa. Grandma and grandpas. Island 
They were all trying to ghost us because it was a time when our people were feeling hopeless because the Washitus, the white man came and they took over all our land. And so all the people were looking for something different and, and they, they thought when Woboka, a Paiute, had a dream, if, if we did this dance, then all our relatives in the spirit world would come back. And so Lakotas, Arapahos, they were all converging in the badlands. And, and the Washitus who start taking over this area were scared because all the Indians were coming together. Just like we are now, they're probably afraid of us for what we're doing up here. Because when you look around, there's a lot of us gathered on these iron horses to remember these ancestors who were buried here. And so at that time, they called in the military. They called them in to, to kind of rope us in, to keep us under control. And so when Spotted Out came down here to talk to Red Cloud, um, they captured him. Well, you heard the story from the survivors at uh, Bridger this morning, but they found him five miles up the road. I don't know if you guys remember seeing that sign that said Bigfoot Surrenders. And Bigfoot was a derogatory name for him. That's what the Washitus called him. But his name was Spotted Out. And that's what his people called him. And so they, they captured him up, up five miles up the road and they brought him down to that open field over there on the other side of the road. And that's and that's where they disarmed him. They went in, they set up their teepees and then and then the um, seventh cavalry, and you're all familiar with that because we Ogalala, Sichangu, Hokapapa, um Hohoju we, we wiped out the Seventh Calvary at the Little Bighorn. And so they were the ones that came down here and they were getting revenge. They were getting revenge for taking out Custer at the Little Bighorn. And what they did is they disarmed all the all the Lakotas over there, all the spotted out and some of the Hukapapas that, that were camped down there. They, they surrounded them. They put a howitzer, which is a big, it was like at that time, it was the biggest, um, weapon of mass destruction that the military had and they had one set up on a hill up there and a hill up there and i think that hill they had them surrounded and they were aimed towards the camp and so when they disarmed them they disarmed all the indians all the lakotas down there there was this one Nakcha guy in our, in our language Nakcha means he was deaf he couldn't talk and they tried to take his gun from him he had it hidden under his robe under his blanket and when they tried to take, he couldn't understand what they were saying, but they were trying to take his gun. And, and they said when they were trying to take his gun from him, then, then it went off. And that's what caused the military to just unload all their weapons down in that camp. And they didn't just kill Lakotas, they killed their own um, cavalry soldiers were killed at that time. And so when that firefight started and they start shooting those howitzers, they were just blowing up teepees and, and, and it was uh, chaos. So a lot of the people took off for the cricks and the cavalry chased them down and they, they gunned them down. I'm sorry, they gunned them down. Women and children. And they, they had no mercy on them. And then, and then they just let them lay there. They lay there because after they killed them that night, there was a blizzard and their bodies were laid there, froze. And so the next day <clears throat> they came, they came and they loaded all the bodies up that they found. And they dug this big hole right here. And this is where they threw all the bodies right there. And so that's, that's where they lay to this day. And so as Lakota riders from from Ogallala Nation, when we put together this ride, we do it to remember what happened that day and to also gather to make sure it doesn't happen to our people again. And so a lot of the, or the organizers are all veterans, they're all military, and so we made a promise to protect our people as warriors to do this for them. And so, um, you know, I want to say about that much, it's a sad story, you know, it's hard to talk about it. Because when we hear stories about it, you know, they're passed down through our oral history. And, um, you know, a lot a lot of people, you know, you know, they, they kind of blame the Ogallalas for that. But, you know, it wasn't our fault. You know, Red Cloud didn't know that was going to happen to our, our, um, 
whole Hoshu reality is coming down to visit with them. You know, and so and, and after they massacred them, there was battles all over this place. They had to take all the white people who settled in here south of white clay and, and, and a lot of the mixed bloods too. They, they had to put them over there for safety because because all the, even the Ogallalas were, they, they just, you know, it was crazy. It was chaos also. They were just um, fighting, every, you know, all the people that were around. So, um, you know, that that's kind of the story that I heard. And, and I told the story about the 15 Hukpapas that um, they didn't see the massacre because they were off on their own and they weren't with the main group. And over when we stopped in Kyle, that's where the Ogallala um, Indian police caught up with them. And instead of bringing them the way we came or the quickest route here, they took them south. And that road today would be Highway 18. And so those Hukapapas didn't know their relatives were killed here until they got to Pine Ridge. So they took, that building is still there, it's called Joiner Hall. That's where they took all the wounded that were still alive and, and uh, the doctors try to uh, fix them. So um, yeah, I want to I thank you all for, for listening. I know it's a real hard story to tell because we take that personal because we really want you all to get here safe and return home safely. So I want to thank Jonathan for her prayers and blessings for each and every one of you because I know all of you, all our tribes, we have, you have your own wounded knee stories, Washita and Sand Creek and the long walk of the Navajo. You know, we've all gone through something like wounded knee and it's good to see all tribes Yate. Oh, 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 say Jonathan Nez again. <laughs> Viga. Hey. <laughs> yeah. They uh, a Farmington, a Farmington, uh, New Mexico, Dan, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you for coming up for the event. Uh, yeah, um, East Quadena, shot north of Delcon, Arizona. Yep, I've been here for about five years now. He's in law, six years yet. Um, uh, Roger, hey, yeah, father in law, Roger White Eyes. There you go, Navajo Nation. There you go. Let's try it down there. Damn. Bunch of food. All the bikers from all around the state, the country, and to Canada. Where's your husband at? Seven, eight, eight. Huh? Oh, okay. You call um, our YouTube channel since you guys watch it, or he watches it, yeah. Okay, yeah, he watches it, so I wanted to. Uh, he has this one. He, he said XL, yeah. So this is XL, this is our YouTube channel. And Navajo and Ogallala sales because of our boys, yeah. yeah. Our, 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 our Twindians, that's what we call them, Twindians. Twindians, monster slayers. Yeah, our YouTube channel in the back is a logo I drew myself. Yeah, I got represents the twins. Was that standing rock? Let's take a picture of the tank tops like that. Sure. Oh, really? Yeah, we look so nice. Like this. I want to show up, but then I don't know how to get it. I'm giving it to one of our subscribers here. This is your husband, Indians. This is large. Oh, oh, okay, okay, yep, yep. This is yours then. Yeah, this is our twins. And, our, and then the back has our YouTube channel. Oh, okay. So 
Thank you. Oh, Nato, shout out. Thank you for coming out. Oh, Nato. Thank you. Appreciate it. Alright. It's like chapter house food. In loving memory, Sissy White Eyes. That's it, Grandma Sissy. Roger, but my yeah. <laughs> 